Hello, Amir. I'm very, very pleased to be able to show you your new perfume, Great Britain. You know that you're maybe only about the fourth or fifth person in the world to have this perfume, and certainly the very first person, I think, in the Middle East with it. We have to thank our lovely friend Ali here for agreeing to take the thing back. But here it is in its box. You can see the outer box has this flag. Most English people call it a Union Jack, but it's wrong. Its real name is a Union Flag. We call it a Union Jack only when it's on a boat. Um, I love this scent. I'm very, very proud of this scent. I made it uh, because I was made an ambassador for Great Britain for my creative work and I was asked to create the perfume for the world's first great festival, which was held in Istanbul in Turkey. I liked the perfume so much, I wanted that the perfume didn't disappear, and so I was granted permission to be able to use the Union flag, and on the back it tells the story of me being an ambassador, and down the bottom it shows uh, the Great Britain campaign for which I am an ambassador. The scent is very, very particular, because I had to think, how does my country smell? So if you end up thinking, well, how does Iran smell? Everybody will have their own idea. For me, Britain is a country where it's a very strong country and we're a very, very uh, proud nation, proud country. So I wanted a lot of very, very strong materials, a lot of woods, because uh, wherever we have power, in the Palace of Westminster, which is our government, or in the gentlemen's clubs inside uh, Buckingham Palace, you'll see lots and lots of wood. And in London, where we have many, many, many parks, we're famous for the green spaces, we don't plant flowers, which is ironic, because everybody thinks of us uh, loving flower gardens, which we do, but our public spaces, we have big trees, ancient trees. So woods were important, along with leather. So the woods give warmth and the leather sensuality. In the heart of the perfume, I used rose, and of course the rose comes from your part of the world. Whilst we all love roses in Britain, and every garden has them, they're not a flower from my country, they come from your part of the world. But it's also a symbol of the royal family. So the rose is a symbol of England, I'm English, I'm from London, and it's also a symbol of our monarchy. So I wanted the rose for that reason, it's very, very traditional. It has a very, very special note of violet, this little flower which grows in the woodland. And the reason for the flower, this violet flower, is that I believe in my country it's possible for anybody to survive. Uh, how, however specialist your work, whatever it is you do, it's a very, very um, easy country because of its creativity and so on, uh, that you can flourish. So even the little woodland flower that most people wouldn't notice is able to flourish. One of the big other materials in here is ambergris. If I'm famous for anything, I'm famous for the quality of the raw materials I use. Ambergris, I'm one of the last perfumers to use this raw material as a natural material. It costs nearly seven times the price of gold bullion. I'm sure you, without question, have seen the BBC documentary um, on this raw material that I was filmed, being the only perfumer they could find who uses it. So it's a very special, sensual note that literally costs more than gold. The box is white uh, piano lacquer. You can see clearly the gold plaque engraved with violet that says the name Great Britain. And when you open it, inside is lined in white silk crepe de chine. And the cap, the cap you see uh, is violet crystal. And the shape, you know, is based on my diamond ring. And the violet, anything you see with violet, tells you it's a very personal story for me. We now have three perfumes with violet caps, and I think there will be no more of them. The first is my perfume, Roger Oat Lux. It's a scent I wear, I wear nothing else. I make 25 bottles a year for UK, and 25 bottles for the rest of the world, because my birthday is the 25th of September, it seemed a good reason. I launched on the 6th of January last year a perfume called A Good Night Kiss. I made this perfume because if my mother hadn't given me a kiss when I was a very small boy, I wouldn't be talking to you now. I wouldn't be sitting here with Ali. Roger Parfum wouldn't exist. This one kiss this woman gave me put me on the path that I was born to live, to be a perfumer. 6th of January, why the date? Very, very simple, because it would have been my mother's birthday. And the last of the story is this one, because the greatest accolade of my working career was when I was asked to be an ambassador for my country. It made me pinch myself. 
because I couldn't believe that these people would have noticed that I exist, let alone the work I do. And this perfume, like my own perfume, I launched on my birthday, the 25th September. I hope you love it. It's an enormous uh, pleasure to bring it here for you. And I can't wait to hear what you end up uh, saying about it. And I've learned from Ali you're part of a huge community of fragrance lovers in Iran. So hopefully you'll spread the word about my work and about this perfume in particular, which I hope you love as much as I do. So, as you can hear, maybe in the background I'm in Milan. So, they're not actors, they're real Milanese people. So we're not just setting the scene. But you ask if I'd sign the bottle for you. And so that's what I would love to do. So hopefully the camera will pick it up. So I've signed the back of the bottle for you here. And I'll also sign the box. And I hope that both become a very nice souvenir. Oop. So I just will put here. Yeah. So, for the first time I didn't talk because I hope the words say everything. Thank you very much. Enjoy my perfume. My very best wishes to you, Amir. Bye-bye.